If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, we talk about uh, a previous episode where me, Adam, and Justin might have sounded like douchebags. What? <laughs> Ouch. Uh, we talk First about, time that's ever happened. We talk about how... Um, Unbelievable. We all have photographic memories in our own ways, including forgetful Adam. <laughs> yeah, he actually we figured out he's a servant. He's a, <laughs> he's a servant. That's Adam Lingo. Uh, and we talk about gambling, uh, find out about uh, Adam's biggest uh, payday at the casino in big old Reno. And then we get into the questions. The first question was uh, what we think about cannabis with workouts. That's right. Marijuana. And weights. Yeah. Does could, it help? get interesting. Does it hurt? I forgot. The, ne- <laughs> the next question is, what is our opinion on selective androgen receptor modulators? Adam loves it when I talk like that. Yeah. Then it, we, it's SARMs. Then someone asked us why they don't feel their chest when they're bench pressing and how they can help change that. So it's can, there. And she, mm. they, they get, actually, get somebody else to feel it. They actually refer say. to the chest as the chesticles. That's the scientific term for the pecs. Whoa. And finally, what burns body fat better? Kettlebell swings or hill springs? Find out in this episode of Mind Pump. The ultimate showdown. Also, uh, three days left for our Prime Bundle. The Prime Bundle includes Maps Prime Pro which and Maps Prime, both of which include self-assessment tools. Prime Pro is your correctional version of Prime. And then regular Prime it teaches you how to Prime your workouts. These are programs that are easily our most valuable programs, especially if you're in the fitness industry or if you're a professional that works with people's bodies, like a physical therapist or a chiropractor. Both those programs will make you much better at your job. It brings you tremendous value. And if you're just a regular person wanting to work out, feel better, move better, again, those programs are also for you. The Prime Bundle takes both programs, discounts them greatly, and it's also on sale on top of that, and there's only three days left for that. You can find that at mindpumpmedia.com. Our, our episode in the car, dude, was so douchey in the beginning, and then Adam's like, yeah, bang that chick, and then yeah. you hear Justin in the background laughing like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like oh shit. Did I, I really say bang? Well, you'd say stuff. I mean, just because yeah, that yeah. sounds bad. Just the conversation. Totally. Well, there's the a conversation com- we had. Like the, the <laughs> talking first- about fucking and having sex, and then ba- if bro, I does that bang, not sound douchey? Bro, bang the- that chick sounds real bro, bad. I hope first, I didn't say that. The first thirty <laughs> minutes of that whole episode <laughs> is us talking about like douchey shit. Like oh, I didn't even like the what way happened we, to us. I don't like the way we sounded. Like I'm like, what the hell did we really sound like that? And then every and then every time we'd say something horrible, you hear just in the background. <laughs> yeah, like, that's yeah, like, right. Yeah, like that. Yeah, right. And then you talk yeah. about your strippers, and you're like, like oh, but yeah. then the fat one comes out, and we're all like, oh. And I'm like, oh no, this sounds really bad. But then it went good, and then it got good. Well, because you know, then we, you know what it is? We're letting our hair out. You know, you know we're, out. Is that <laughs> it that's out. another? There's another you, saying that I just put made that up. monkey in the red. Put the monkey in the red. <laughs> <laughs> keep doing that shit. It just happens. You know what it is? It's uh, because then you listen to the whole episode, and then we're not douches. And you know what it is? Mm. Is that when people listen to our? And I like this about us. When people listen to our podcast. It's uh, very real, and it's very much you. You know, we're, we're vulnerable, we're sensitive, we're douchey, we're just fucking people, and we're just talking amongst ourselves as if <laughs> there's no one else listening to us. And that's what it's. That's what you're listening to. You're listening to three dudes talk about shit, you know, like fitness and stuff like that. But we don't. We almost forget that other people are listening. Yeah, and it's kind of definitely good. forgot. It's good. It might shoot us in the foot one day, but it's okay for now. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I, I think the more that we stay true to ourselves, like, you know, it, it does, like, you, I agree with you. Like, the one thing when you hear something like that and you listen and you go, ah, fuck, I sound like a douchebag saying that. But then, then here's the thing where it's different. Like, I feel like so many people on uh, social media platforms, uh, 
are putting trying to put this fake facade. And it's like I'm not going to lie to people and say like I, I'm talking to you guys who I now consider like family to me and good friends. And there's a lot of stories and things that we've never shared with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they you know so- yeah we've withheld them because we do recognize they're douchey, <laughs> right? And yeah. I think that's what happened is like oh I haven't told you about this story. You get excited about it and you forget that it's totally douchey. You know what? And, and the other part is that, too is that when when People need to understand when when men are around each other, when women are around. Like, if you could be a fly on the wall and listen to women's conversations, they say some shit that's embarrassing too. Guys mm-hmm. do the same thing, mm-hmm. and we just get real comfortable and we start talking, and it's just the way. But when you listen to the whole episode, then you can hear all of that too afterwards. It's just the first half hour. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to listen now. Well, yeah, I think so there. Was... Uh, to me, I feel like there's this. Uh, Always, well, not always, but when we, it reminded me of when we <laughs> That's first, a great story. when we first started <laughs> yeah. podcasting and there was this, um, this pressure to the red light goes on, right? Like, okay, we're, we're recording now, yeah. so we need to provide mm. content. And that was, you know, when you think about it, we're out of our element there. Like when we come in here, it's totally different now. Now we, we're so comfortable sitting here and having a conversation about fitness, health, and training, or anything along those lines. Sometimes the other stuff, too. But You know what's funny is that I have my best conversations with you guys when we have the mics on. Sometimes when we're in the room, yeah. we sometimes save our conversations for when we put the mics on, and then we put the mics oh, on. Oh, 100%. And then, and then we just have this great conversation. Yeah, we just have like total surface stuff outside yeah. of the uh, microphone. Well, and we I do. think that's a that's a skill that we've trained ourselves to do. Like We've realized many times where we've missed good content that didn't get put out on, on air that we said, okay, listen, let's try our best to when not someone, talk to yeah time. when yeah well well we all because we're <laughs> all give you a lot of head nods we're all go we all go our different directions after we leave mind pump you know there's a lot that happens in our lives and we are all very different and have different uh, circles and networks and things of interest that we're each diving into and reading and researching so uh you know when one of us comes across something that wants to share it with the other two we've learned to wait to share that to the podcast so the audience gets the experience of the other two hearing that information well, dude, how many times time. how many times yeah. a day do we say something like hey remind me to talk yeah. about oh i got this story i got the story but i don't want yeah. to, because what happens is and this has happened to us a couple times we'll 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 record we'll we'll have this great story that we'll share with each other and then we'll be like oh you should bring that up in the podcast and then we'll tell it again on the podcast and it's like it doesn't feel it feels fake because your guys' reactions are fucking fake like i love the first reaction the first time you heard it so try and save it you know what i mean for when we turn on the microphones then i could tell you and get your real you know, you mean your real reaction. So hmm, keep anyway. that present wrapped. Yeah. You know what I mean? You did remind me of a song though when you said red light. Yeah. Roxanne, <laughs> you don't have to turn on the red light. Yeah. Yeah. yeah those days are over. See, my my <laughs> yeah. job. Yeah. Thank you for part one of my me. You're my muse. One of my roles at Mind Pump yeah. is to is to spark Justin's, and I like it when you do that way. I think you're lazy it's way sometimes. Better. Yeah, it's way better. That I can just call it. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're lazy and you're just like, Justin, give me a song. You I'm have like, like a new song, and I and always go. defend Justin. I was like, like bro, shit. that's not fair for you to do that to him. We got over 500 episodes. You just can't call on the song to I him. Just, yeah, because then my go-to is gonna be something I've done a gajillion times. That, you know? There's what song is always in your head, it, Justin? Oh, it's it's either like it's reading Did rainbow. Did you ever know that? You, or, or reading <laughs> rainbow? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those two. Why is reading rainbow? I have no idea that's how my brain works well, dude it's like that was a good assist though that was a good yeah. assist what's yeah, the yeah, name yeah, of the dude yeah. that was reading rainbow the, the 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 head guy what is his name he ended uh, up on star trek with the skinny glasses yeah but he came back and they did i think they actually did a kickstarter and then like got a couple more episodes of reading rainbow yeah yeah For it's like real? back yeah. yeah no way totally yeah i love that i love that show, show. yeah it's uh, did you guys watch show. it a lot when you were kids mm-hmm. yeah oh man if you think about it, it's kind of lazy TV too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're going to come up with a TV show. We're going to read books. We don't ever need to come up with content. We just read a book. <laughs> it's brilliant. I and love it ideas. It like is. That. What if we did that? Well, we're doing. What something. if we did another? We are doing something. Let's do to another that. podcast <laughs> where we read books. Just read on the, on the podcast. Mind pump read to. Or me. Or do another yeah. like a twist, or a, we're we're stealing some a page. From I would that do book. that. Yeah. yeah. Justin, Johnson. did you watch Game of Thrones Johnson. yet? God yes, damn it! I did. Yes. God damn. Let's not talk about that. Yes. Dude, why are you not lit watching this show? Because who cares? Dragons. Gosh, I just want to punch you I in know. your dick. Because seriously, who? It's so cares. epic. Oh, oh, you, who? Okay. Oh, only you like. Oh, I don't like cinematic only like, adventures. Only like seven point yeah. five million like the most people epic, care. That's all. You know, story all. that uh, ties in. 
you know, you see like all these characters they pull from real life type characters, man. It's crazy. Shut up. It's amazing. Fucking stupid. It's amazing. You know what it is? I think I <laughs> looking at pro- me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I, know, I, was, I got. I, made, I was quiet. There. I wanted. I wanted it to be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, thanks. For you guys, it's uncomfortable as for that. me. Hearing you guys talk about some stupid shit. It's not. You know what it is? I think if I if I'm going to be objective about myself, perhaps I identify too strongly with not doing what other people do, and maybe that's why I don't watch. Mm. Game of Thrones. Oh, you're well, one of those that's guys. Dumb. Or that is dumb. Or <laughs> you don't get to experience <laughs> awesome shit that way. <laughs> well, well, uh, well, it's that, popular for a reason. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking awesome. Like I said, that could be that's viable, right? It's a very viable. I'm trying to be very objective here. Well, or, or or you're just being stubborn. Or. I'm doing stuff that's actually benefiting me as a human being. It's one of those so two that's things. That's how you justify it. It's one of those two yeah, things. Right. So and I'm not so sure. Entertained and enjoy. Wow, life. look at that. What? Know? How did many I, people are watching? Did I really it? nail that right on the head at seven point five? That was off the cuff, wow. guys. Just so you know. <laughs> so, so you know how you off talk the cuff? You didn't right pre Google at all. Adam, do you know how you talk about my uh, my memory? How I have a picture. What is it called? Uh, photographic uh, memory. Photographic memory. Yeah. And how Justin has that with like mm. jingles and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You actually do a little. You do too. Statistics. You just don't realize it. So yeah, like, no, no, it's you'll say he's like, he's like Rain Man. No, no, Have no. You figure that out. Yet? He'll say a number, One and point, then he'll pretend. Seven. He'll forget that he knew it. Yeah. He'll be like, "Wow, I nailed that. I totally get it." No, you didn't. <laughs> definitely, definitely. You, came, you read that at some point. I, I probably did. You're probably right. I was. Uh, so funny you say that, right? So when I was a kid, my mom. I have this memory of my mom. So we were in a Modesto house, which has to. This puts me before third grade. So I don't know exactly how I know for sure before third grade. Uh, when my mom would had guests come over to the house, she used to use me like a party trick, and she would at, she would call me out of my room, and I'd normally be in there playing with my sister or hanging out with friends, and she would love to g- have me rattle off all the stats of players in the major league baseball. So because I used to memorize all the stats of all the baseball players and their and like what team they played for, their batting average, how many, oh, you know, wow. and she used to like quiz me like give me the first baseman of the Mets and I'd tell you who yeah. it was, how many years he's playing, his batting average, wow. how many home runs. Like I'd be able to do That's that. That's so funny. They did the same like my, when my parents had people over, they did the same thing where like I was in the other room still finishing dinner because I was the one that would always take forever to eat. And so I was left at the dinner table. I would have never myself. guessed that. I I would think that you like crush food. I mean, I I did, but I, I kept eating. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wasn't done yet. Oh, so you would? <laughs> yeah, everybody was done, and I'm like, "Where's everybody going?" So, so it was I'm like, still eating. It was like tortoise in the hair. Like you're gonna go slow, but you're gonna totally. Fucking finish I, I'm the- honestly gonna self like I'm <laughs> I'm gonna call myself the tortoise. Like I know nobody has before, but that's totally applicable. Okay. Like that's my that's my mo. So they call you out. So I was like sitting in there by myself, and there. This is when Fresh Prince of Bel Air was real popular. Oh, yeah. You know, and so I, I love that show. And, and like, I knew the jingle and everything like crazy. You know, West Philadelphia, born and raised in the playground. <laughs> anyway, I go on and on. But uh, so they, they just started it. And then, and then, like, I heard my dad or someone was like, watch this. And he, like, muted it. And I was singing it. And I did it, like, verbatim, like, we're, like all the way to where the timing of it stopped. And they, they turned it back on. And I was right in sync and everything. And he's just like, he just does this. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just weird. And I did, like, it's for everything. It's talent that yeah, he has. exactly. It didn't pay off. Or maybe yeah. it is. Maybe it is. It's funny though when you you remember things like that right and i i mean i think how effective is fucking advertising oh my, my god. god they god. they ninjaed my entire brain well i also think about like learning how i this is also why i think future of education is going to change because i think learning how to hack that because we're all unique and different right and we've talked about sal reading the encyclopedia as a young Ooh. kid like i you know in this business, in the one that I did, what made me successful as a fitness leader when I worked for 24 was I was very analytical. I took the numbers down and I broke it all down and I simplified that for personal trainers because I think a lot of them overcomplicate the business. <clears throat> and I I did, I thought I did a pretty good job of, of helping others simplify how I did. And uh, even in this business, I I am part of most of my time at night is spent going through our numbers. I'm always looking at uh, numbers and graphing them and paint. like I, I enjoy that and I've enjoyed it since I was a kid I enjoyed but I did it for baseball cards when I was a kid and I lost that connection to that now through school and stuff like that I excelled in mathematics but I didn't push it though and then it's funny because my last year of high school 
Um, I was already, I was done with my math. I didn't need to take any more math. I should have taken more math because I love math. I did well in it, but because I didn't need to, I chose to get out of school, you know, half, you know, half day in my senior year because I was ahead of all my units when I wished uh, I would have connected those dots. You know, that that was something Did I you was- see math as, because uh, like for me, one of the reasons why I loved reading encyclopedias is it was like, I was I was looking at like the secrets of the world, like oh my god, I can read about how everything <laughs> works and I can know all the shit. Did you see math that way? Like this I saw math. The way of- I looked at math and what why I was drawn to math was, to me, nothing's more true. Uh, I, and I love and I felt have fallen in love with with science as I've gotten older and I've in, and I've I've learned to appreciate science, but I didn't like science at all as a kid. Um, because there was, there's so many uncertainties. It was, it reminded me of religion and I, and I didn't like that about religion either as I felt like, uh, math was so true. Two plus two will always be four. And as, as more, as math became more complicated, there still was always an answer. And I liked that. I liked that I had a goal, which was find the right answer. And there is it, a right answer. And there is a right. And I and I and maybe I didn't Except get in the quantum world. And Thank ma- you, Justin. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Boom! <laughs> yeah. Science. Yeah. 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 And well, that's where science meets math, right? So yeah. I think uh, I that's what made me as a kid enjoy that. And I could, you know, and that's how we used to debate as a young kids. I remember with my friends, my cousins, like when you would debate me about a baseball player. You know how I debate you, how good he is. I could rattle his stats off and his numbers. Like, you can't tell me that guy's better than this guy because that guy averages five more home runs. That guy gets on base two more times, gets yeah. this many more yeah. outs. Like you could argue all you want because you like him. I don't. You know, you've you, done your homework. You yeah. like his hair and you like yeah. his color of his jersey. But I'm going to tell you right now that he's not a better player for these reasons because there's yeah. math to prove it. You know, well, so all those 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 uh, what do you call them? Bookies? Like yeah, they, man, they're so good at that. Like getting all aggregating all that data and well, like, putting it all together, and then how that all interacts. Acts, like based off the environment, based off you know, like the wa- their wife left them, or well, you know, they you know, know all funny? those factors. If you want to predict, it's uh, crazy. If you want to predict elections and stuff like that, mm. like the most accurate places to look are bookies, because people will will bet money oh, on that's a good point. who's going to win. Yeah. You know, well, because they're fall- they're following the math, right? I mean, yeah. I, that's all. I mean, peering deeper into me, that's all you, algorithms. You, you can are, figure yeah. out why. Yeah. I fell in love with cards. I fell in love with that early on, uh, learning how to, like, trying to teach myself how do to Do you count. still have baseball cards? Uh, I do put away somewhere, like, in class cases and shit. Dude, my like my cousin my cousin went through his and found his, uh, God, what was it? Was it his Troy Aikman rookie card or something? I don't know. It, one of his cards is worth, like, $5,000 or something No like that. way. Yeah. Man, I'm going to have to go through mine. I have yeah, a yeah. few that are worth in the hundreds. I thought I they were sure. worthless because nobody like cares about buying them now. You know, I used to buy score all the time. Score cards. I used to buy well, up the upper deck ones upper, I, at the time were like the most valuable. So I upper deck was ex- was expensive. Yeah. Then there was what, Don Russ? Mm-hmm. It was which is kind of was in the middle, yeah, like and then Russell tops was no tops was yeah, cheap. Tops, yeah, tops was the cheap one. <clears throat> so yeah, I, all that and, you know and why I love the game of craps. Like uh, that, that's by far I, that's my adult game for sure. That I, I find it's very mathematical. Shouldn't you be oh, playing? Yeah. And it's fast. I can't. Yeah, fast I still and, haven't figured that one out. But yet. shouldn't you play? What's that one game that they say where the odds are in your favor if you're it's, really good? It's craps. It's, it's craps. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Roulette. Okay. Yeah, you're okay. You're talking about the guy who likes gambling. We're gonna debate. This I right thought now. it was Kino or something no, like that. No, Craps has, uh, Craps has uh, when you talk about the dollar to percentage and odds of winning out of all the games that are inside that's there. That's why I'm horrible at gambling. It's best in the player, has the best odds for the player if you know how to fucking do the math and play the game. Like, if you go out there and you just put it, it's very much so in the favor of the casino if you know how to, if you don't know how to play. Yeah. That's what's so beautiful about the game is that it's same thing goes for a game of Texas Hold'em, like you can, you can, there's still luck, like luck always plays a role in gambling, but if you can increase your odds by being mathematical about it, you can definitely kill out a majority of the competition. How much, how, what's the most you've ever won playing craps? In a single like outing? Yeah, that you can tell on the podcast. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. I don't want yeah, you to some of it's taxable. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. million dollars. Yeah, exactly. No, what no, year? no. I've never, won, yeah. I've never won that. I think the best, uh, and it was actually Reno, not Vegas. Vegas has gotten me more. Uh, Fourteen thousand. Fuck, that's oh, not bad. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a. I've had a couple weekends. Dude, I, I went to Ve- I went to Vegas with a buddy of mine years ago, and he invited his buddy, who had an internet gambling website. And I don't know what the what the website was, but it was the second at the time. So this has got to be... He ran the website? Hold on. It was his. Yeah. This has to be 
at least eight to ten years ago. So, and his website was the second largest gambling website on the internet. So this Holy guy was shit. He's loaded. Way rich. I'd never seen somebody throw money. Don't like this tell around. me he's the one that got in trouble for uh, playing as like an admin. I don't know. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know this guy. So anyway, yeah, I meet I, him. I read about somebody. He's that did the that. biggest, most awkward. Uh, nerd you've ever met like just this massive nice guy but you could tell like he really wanted to use his money to make friends he meets me for the first time he's like Sal what's going on he's like I'm like oh you know I'm over here why are you here it's my birthday and he's like oh here go play he gives me like $500 worth of uh, you know $100 chips or whatever then we're gambling and I'm and he's telling me to enjoy myself to gamble I'm like I'm keeping this shit I don't like gambling 500 <laughs> bucks is mine I watched him no joke in less than ten minutes, lose twenty five thousand dollars on the roulette table. Ugh, and no, and why like, do they, people do that? All he the time. put stacks of money all over the that fucking table. Literally makes my balls bro. Go like three times inside my body. Like three times, and I'm watching him lose this money, and Ugh. I can't figure out how much it is. And I'm like, how much money did you well, just lose? Well, you know, it happened 20, right in front of me. So, twenty five G's, yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, what what what, what happens 50, when you're somebody who likes to gamble? And so I've gambled for for a long time. You feel invincible. Well, no. Right? What what happens is as you're as your uh, your income increases, the amount you have to resist to enjoy the game increases. Yeah. So when I I remember, I remember this vividly, like I used to love to play Texas Hold'em because I could spend a hundred dollars and I could play for ten hours. Yeah, because I could manage the game, I could manage my chips, and I could play a whole night of gambling. I got to feel like I gambled, and I only risked pie gal for me, and I only risked a hundred dollars. Well, pie gal, pie a lot gal. of that, a lot of why, well, a big part of why I enjoyed that was because that wasn't a, that that time in my my life that was I wasn't risking a lot and but it was enough to make me enjoy the 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 Mm. thrill of potentially losing and winning and that's what we're all chasing is that adrenaline rush from it right and so you know as a hundred dollars became not a such a big deal to lose to me I that increased and then it became 500 then became a thousand and then I needed to be I needed to have the risk of losing three to five thousand dollars at a time before it it was enjoyable and so I watched that progression Mm -hmm. with myself so that you know when you see someone like that it's really it's no different than you gambling they're more numb to it they're no different to you gambling five hundred two hundred dollars and losing that because your two hundred dollars is what it's like for him walking around with twenty five thousand dollars it depends on the person too because I'm now if you're now if if you're an idiot who's gambling twenty five thousand dollars and you don't have twenty five thousand dollars in the bank, that's a totally different yeah, story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're talking about an alcoholic yeah. or a drug abuser, right? Yeah. Right? You know but, what I'm saying? But it does depend on the person because I'm I get furious if I lose five bucks. Furious still <laughs> to this day. I, that's why I hate gambling. I'm not a I can't stand oh, it. Oh yeah, no, that's you, why it's you, not for you. Yeah, exactly. You that's why know we, it's already gone. We went to, I go in there knowing it's already gone. That's why we went to Reno and just hung out with. I just watched you gamble. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I got the free drinks. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> because no, as soon no as I, I lose five bucks, I'm like, dude, I could have bought a fucking coffee and chips yeah. or something like well, that. That's, that's your right. Or I could have got half a movie ticket. Good. That's fine. You know well, saying? I really believe that casinos, I enjoy it. Casinos and places like that, they make their big money off of lots of people like yourself who mm-hmm. aren't really gamblers, don't want to gamble, that are just trying well, it's to. It's like credit machines. card companies. They yeah. just constantly, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Take, my take from my my very very first time gambling. I turned twenty one. I go to Vegas because I turned twenty one. My parents are there. We're all having a good time, and everybody's like, "Aren't you going to gamble?" I'm like, eh. "I'm like, all right, you know, you have to, right? Because you're twenty one. It's like a big thing." I put a quarter in the slot machine. I won six hundred bucks, and I never gambled the rest of the trip. Got that's my, pretty good. Yeah, got my six hundred bucks. It's like profit. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's, 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 that's pretty good discipline to be able mm-hmm. to do that. Not a lot of people have that ability. Yeah, it's a it's the ability to walk away when you. Uh, I was good at that. No I was I was good at uh, no you know get to a point way. where I I had like numbers I have in my head like I'm going here. I'm willing to play play with this money. If it's gone in ten minutes, I'm done. If it lasts me all night, then it's good. If I get to a certain point, I walk away from the table. And so, have you ever seen like big time high rollers play a uh, gamble? Oh god, of course. Yeah, no, I've seen you like your big big ballers. They don't even have to carry their own money. Like so, when you go to big casinos. Mm. Uh, where you have major gamblers, uh, these guys will come out and they'll just call a marker. And and when they call a marker from a guy, will come walk over with a million dollars worth of chips and that's crazy. And and set it down on there if they I, have, if they have that much good cl- collateral with the casino, they they don't have to carry money. So, so I, visited, I never got to that point where I had that yeah. much. You know, I've got my host and things like I that, but not, like, <laughs> not to where I. How is it, Dan Bilzerian? Like, 
how does that guy like kill it so much well, in poker? There's a lot of skill in poker, dude. Hundred percent. There's yeah. a lot of skill in Absolutely. poker. Absolutely. I know. Absolutely. I know that. It's, just, it's a. It's, it's a, crazy that you could make like that. That's, that's it, your, your wealth. Well, you came from poker. Well, you know what? Like, and I, I had money you, before. I that. kid you not. I I liked it enough. So yeah, I have a cousin. I, I have a cousin. He says he didn't, but that's him. I have a cousin that I taught the game to, who has continued to pursue it as a living. Yeah, and he doesn't do well at all. In fact, but uh, and. I contemplated that at one point, like, do I want to get even better at this? Because I'm not that good. Like, I can play, mm-hmm. you know, and I understand the game. I understand the math. But, you know, you, where you make big money is when you learn when you learn it very, very well and you have it down mathematically really well, you just pick off people all day long that don't. Yeah. You know, when you said it, when I said it, well, I was they're, they're just professionals, too. We talk about reading people and stuff like psychics and all that. I swear they're like on another level. Bro, it's also, people it's also a game of attrition when when these guys will sit down for these tournaments. I know it's endurance. They're yeah. there for 100%. hours. Oh, yeah. Whoever hours. gets mentally fatigued. We used to go. We used to wait. OK, we yeah. would. There's times. So we would we would wait till I'd want to gamble all day because I'd love to play cards. But I would wait till like midnight to go down to the table. <laughs> all the tired people. That, that's because, why I never liked it. Because it takes all, too long. Yeah. Man. All the all the tired and all the drunk people coming in from the clubs. They sit down. They make sloppy decisions. I'm playing consistent by the numbers. Mm-hmm. You wait till the odds are high on your side. Then you push uh, yeah. hard, yeah. and all you need is one one idiot to, to make a bad decision an hour, yeah. and I rake all in. I, <sighs> yeah, I rake over three yes. five hundred dollars, and all the odds are on my side. I mean, he could have won. Luck is always involved in the game, but the likelihood when the odds are that high on me, I just took advantage of some drunk idiot who's trying to show off for his girlfriend. He mm-hmm. just came out of the club. So guys make livings off of this. I, many many guys because I gamble enough that. You know, I've got to know a lot of dudes that do this for a living. All the you, rounders, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah sit and talk rounders. to them. Yeah, you see, when you're a regular guy who goes there, you start to see the regular people. So you yeah. know who the sharks are when you get there. But if you're somebody who doesn't go all the time, you don't know who the shark is at the table. <laughs> Hi, it's my first time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's me. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I remember I remember Devour being- Devour him. Is this, are these good? Are these yeah. cards good? <laughs> What should I, I do? Yeah. I remember getting so me? regular that you you get to see, and the, so there'd be like three of us at a table that like we're all regulars, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, four fish come on, and you just uh, and and then you take like piranhas. You all take all turns. <laughs> fold. Yeah. Fold. I'm I'm if one of us four sharks are sitting at this table of seven. The, and I see, I see three of them fold out. You know, by the look I'm, in your eye, you're yeah. like, oh yeah. Or if I if sand. I call yeah. or I put if I push some chips in right now, and I have the three sharks behind me, they're gonna fold out. They're not gonna compete against me. Right. They're gonna let me play against the against the, and vice versa. Because or it's easy money. If one yeah. of them comes over, raises me, then I know that. And knowing how smart they are, and they know better to even be doing that. If I'm ra- then I'm I feel you know what I'm saying. So you yeah, yeah, yeah. you learn like when you start to learn like who are other players, you guys start to play together and you start to fuck yeah, up people that come on the so there's bet that's crazy. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Years ago, I, I went uh, visited on vacation. I went to Monaco and went to the like the Monte Carlo Casino, mm-hmm. which is a kind of a tourist attraction. It's like but famous, you, yeah. But you have to pay to go in there, right? Mm. The tables there were like five and ten thousand uh, euro minimum bets. Wow, that was the minimum bet in, on a lot of these tables. And I was expecting this huge casino. It wasn't even that big. It was just the amount of money people were betting. Well, it's a really rich area. Yeah. Oh my Isn't god, dude. Monica, yeah. bro! The, like, the the freaking they do the race there, the Formula One. Bro, oh, that? dude, yeah. the, the taxi the taxi cars are are fifty and sixty thousand uh, dollar Mercedes, mm-hmm. and Lamborghinis are driving by and Ferraris like nothing. Like I saw, yeah. I've never seen a McLaren, a legit one million dollar McLaren, dude. out on the street oh. ever. Except for there, and I saw two of them. Wow. Like, when's the last time you saw a million dollar car drive by you? Yeah, it's a very strange place, but uh, the casino, I remember sitting I there. I saw I'm, a Bugatti. That was pretty cool. Oh, that's yeah, a great that's car. It's a great looking car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bring on the bird. The sexy bird with lots of money. is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quee-quad. Our first question is from K Town. Thoughts on having some cannabis in your system on some training days. He has had some great mind-body connections using K 
cannabis during some of his workouts. Really, on, on the same day? Yeah. I'm really feeling this workout. Yeah. I feel like that's in your wheelhouse, Adam. Yeah. Uh, yeah Adam's uh, pre-workout. I'm not. I'm definitely not a fan of... As, as much of a fan as I am of cannabis, I'm not one to do it to work out. For me, personally, I know people that do, and they uh, absolutely love it, say it works for them, and if it works for you, but... I hear a lot of jujitsu guys I like to do that. I, that's, that's true. I, I So, okay, and I get that, right, because... I could see them wanting to kind of be loose and relax a little bit while they're training. Mm-hmm. Um, when I, if I ever were to do this, it was when I was training for a show, and I'd have to do these hour bouts of cardio. I just year round, I don't do hour bouts of cardio. Just it's not in my regimen unless I'm trying to get ready for a show and I need to put that time in. So when I would do that, sometimes I would smoke because I would want to be just. Mine, I would, I would want that me to be dazed, go you know, thinking about a bunch of things. You know how you get when you when you smoke, all creative, and and I'm doing such easy cardio that it's not intense. I don't have to push really hard, so I would love my mind to trail and do that. Now, when I'm training, lifting weights, I want to be so in tune with my body, and and I don't want to be trailing off. Uh, I want to be hyper focused. So now we could talk all day long about certain strains and how some people, when they take a higher sativa, they notice that they become hyper focused. And when they do indica, it's the opposite. So, you know, you have to kind of, yeah, everyone, I believe that, uh, I believe that cannabis uh, affects everybody differently. And then I also believe that uh, the strain, the percentage, and this is the stuff that I believe we're going to find out and learn more about in the next five years, because now we're finally getting to do some studies on this shit. You know, the difference when you smoke something that has 17% THC to the ratio of 3% CBD versus one that's one to one versus one's three times to one. I, I think that all matters. It does, but I'll tell you what. So there's a lot of interesting anecdote uh, now that is coming out with cannabis and um, athletes. Many athletes find cannabis to be a performance-enhancing drug. For endurance. Endurance athletes. Yeah. Mo- endurance. Mo- mostly yeah. endurance athletes. However, hmm. I have had so many people who lift weights and like to use cannabis to lift weights that uh, I'm starting to kind of listen to what they're saying and I'm paying attention. And here's here's where cannabis um, may be okay, or I- I'm not going to say okay, but may benefit someone as a performance-enhancing han- substance, substance with weights. Now, first off, the science is relatively conclusive in terms of uh, performance enhancement with cannabis for explosive movements, and the science shows it's not. The, shi- the science shows okay, that under the influence, like, what? Yeah, yeah, under the influence of cannabis, you're going to be, you're going to have less uh, power, peak power output, less uh, proprioceptive ability, and explosive uh, power. However, there is a mind-body connection that happens with cannabis where people will go in to try and get a pump or to isolate a muscle, squeeze, mm. you know, feel the stretch, feel the squeeze. And they'll do this uh, and they'll love the, the effects that cannabis will give them when they're lifting weights for that particular purpose. And I can kind of understand this. I personally, yeah. I use cannabis mostly medicinally and I use it in the evening. However, I have used cannabis before uh, yoga before hiking, mm-hmm. before stretching. Oh, it's great for <clears throat> mobility. And ex- and I noticed it really does a great, uh, like it really puts me in the zone for those types of things. I would hate to lift really heavy with cannabis, but I could see myself going to the gym and saying, okay, today's a, a focus session or today I'm just going to go light and just squeeze the muscle and try and get a pump. Then I could see it maybe helping out a little bit. Now, from a physiological standpoint, can cannabis... Uh, promote or uh, reduce your, uh, you know, the way you adapt to exercise? That's a very, very good question. Question. Now, what they're finding with high intensity uh, exercise, especially when you start to train to exhaustion, and this is more common with endurance type uh, activities, is your body actually releases its own endocannabinoids. So uh, you got to understand with cannabis, uh, which is of course the, the well, if you the, smoke it, it's inflammatory too. This, okay, so, so you got you to gotta consider that also. So right? here's the thing. So cannabis contains what are called phytocannabinoids. Phyto meaning plant. Cannabinoids is a type of uh, chemical molecules that are found in cannabis. Your body has its own endocannabinoids, which are cannabinoids your body makes because we have receptors for these cannabinoids. When you're under, uh, when you train to exhaustion or you're training really hard, 
your body releases its own endocannabinoids because they're pain relieving um, and they they help you push a little harder. This is uh, what a, some scientists now are attributing the runner's high to. They're actually saying, oh, maybe you actually are getting high and it's these endocannabinoids. So I can see how maybe taking phytocannabinoids may give you that effect uh, and may uh, you know help your performance as far as like helping muscle growth. Here's something else that's interesting with cannabinoids. In animal studies, because there's a high uh, uh, there's a, a high density amount of uh, cannabinoid receptors in the reproductive organs of humans. So the fear was if I have a lot of cannabinoids in my system uh, from outside my body, like from 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 cannabis, will I affect my body's own hormone production or you know receptors to hormones? Am I going to lower testosterone? Am I going to change my hormones? Animal studies say yes. Animal studies say that cannabis or cannabinoids will lower testosterone. Human studies uh, so far say no. When they test uh, people who use cannabis on a regular basis, they find it does not lower testosterone. My personal opinion is the uh, the verdict is still out. I don't think there is. I can't make a, a, a definitive yes or no. What I will say is... Well, I can speak from experience on something that I find very fascinating because... Uh, and I've shared this before on the show because of my testosterone use, I'm very prone to gyno. Oh, gynecomastia? Yes. And if I am on a, a dose of testosterone in the 250 milligram range or more per week, and I'm in taking a, a moderate to high intake of cannabis, I will actually flare up. And it took me a long time to put together mm-hmm. that it was from the actual cannabis Mm -hmm. and I've uh, and I've multiple times I've played with this to make sure that's what it was and as sure as shit if I was smoking a lot of cannabis at at this time uh, it would I would be super sensitive to it and I would flare up if I would take and I'll take it completely out and then my uh, gyno would would completely uh, subside so and by the way what you're there's actual uh, if you go to a doctor and you're a male, and you have uh, a gyno, which is this the basically it's female breast tissue. So you're so you're 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 a man, but you're you're starting to produce female. You get them boobies. Yeah, and you start to feel it, right? Or sometimes it gets really bad, and they have to have it surgically removed. If yeah, you go, a lot of people don't realize that I, that I have it because I keep it at bay because I can feel it. I can feel it coming on before it even happens. It's it's a it's mm. very so, wild. So and and men will get it who aren't on testosterone. So like. Uh, boys who go through puberty sometimes will get it. I did when I was a kid, uh, when I went through puberty, and this is because of the spike of testosterone. Some of it gets converted to estrogen. But if you go to a doctor and you have gyno, one of the things they'll ask you is if you use cannabis because cannabis has been connected to uh, increased instance uh, instances of, of gyno, especially high doses. So it, it might not have favorable effects on your hormone levels, this, again, the verdict isn't out yet because the, the science so far says, mm, no, it doesn't seem to negatively affect testosterone. However, anecdote and other studies are pointing that it may, in fact, do that. So I don't necessarily think cannabis is a great thing to use all the time when you're working out because I think it may negatively affect uh, your body's ability to adapt to exercise. Plus, we got to remember something here. Cannabinoids have an anti-inflammatory effect in the body. They do influence the way the body responds to stress. And anytime you mess with that, you are messing with the adaptation signal from exercise. And you may, in fact, be reducing things like muscle protein synthesis. I don't, there, I don't know of any studies that show mm. cannabis use with exercise and protein synthesis, which is the kind of a, a, a signal of muscle growth. But I would love to see one because I'd love to see... What's happening there? Oh, I can't wait till they have more studies around this. So I said, and I think in the next five years, we're going to have so much more information yeah. about something like this. But I mean, being it's, impor- some, it's important to note, like it's being, not benign, right? Be, oh, yeah. And being somebody who has been a been smoking cannabis for a pretty consistent basis for several, several years now, and I've been training for 15 plus, I can tell you from personal experience that I don't see a lot of benefit from it. I don't see a lot of drawback either unless, for instance, like I tell you right now, if you are prone to things like that hormonally like I am, that it does throw my hormones off a little bit. And now that that requires that I am smoking like a full joint in a, a, a night. Like that's a lot. That's a ton for me. Like that's for me to be doing something like that. That's a lot of uh, cannabis to be intaking where – 
I typically intermittently will have it and I have it at night and it's like a, a couple hits of it and I'm good. Like that's enough mm-hmm. to settle me down for the entire night. So, but there's also a lot of factors you want to consider. Like if you use cannabis, if you have issues sleeping, um, uh, cannabis, by the way, if you have issues sleeping, there's root causes you should solve. But in the meantime, a nice, a potential, you know, solution for that symptom to help you sleep, maybe cannabis. Um, will that help you build muscle? Yes. In that case, cannabis may right, actually help right. you. That's an excellent point. Do you have issues with autoimmune disorders like irritable bowel syndrome like I do? Like I have. I would not be using it to be directly trying to build muscle. That's right, what I'm trying to right, say. hundred percent. Right. But you're right on. I mean, I agree. because Indirectly, how- I guarantee you cannabis helps me build muscle, but it's not because the cannabis is helping me build muscle. It's because cannabis helps me with uh, my symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome, which if I get real bad with that, I ain't building no muscle. I'm not absorbing nutrients and food. So in that case, it becomes a, a positive for me. So it's a, it's, a, it's a potent psychoactive substance. It's not benign. Um, it can be positive for you or it can be negative for you depending on your individual uh, situation. In terms of when you're actually performing, uh, I think if you're doing things to exhaustion or to endurance, so far the anecdote seems to show a lot of athletes are saying, hey, man, if I use, an, especially an edible before my race, or before my training, like I have more endurance and I can go longer. So that's kind of interesting. I think that's something we should. I look think at. That, I think that's interesting. Although I would not recommend this to anybody to to pick it. Do I would not pick up a habit of doing this to get performance. No, out of it. you know, no. I wouldn't be like, hey, you know what? I heard that this could be possible. Yeah, exactly. I don't even use cannabis. I'm going to start using it to do. No, I don't. Here's think what's interesting. That's a good there have been there have been several. <laughs> you get lost on the trail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whoa! It's the first time yeah. I've ever taken an edible. I went, I went on a six mile <laughs> hike yesterday. I meant to do thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah. Just jumps off a cliff. What I, uh, happened to Bob? Uh, so here's a, here's something that's fascinating. You can actually look this up on Google if you don't believe me. There's well, been if it's a, on Google. I'm there's a no no no. There's actual articles <laughs> written on this right now. There's been a there's been a few studies that have demonstrated that people who utilize cannabis on a regular basis lower fasting uh, insulin levels. Uh, their blood sugar levels are better controlled, and they're leaner. And they think they're leaner because of what I just said about the blood sugar and insulin. Mm. In fact. Uh, Pharmaceutical companies are investing money right now, millions of dollars, on potential treatments for pre-diabetes and and diabetes with cannabinoids. So there may be a fat kind of burning effect oh from God. cannabis. Dude, once this is all legal, all you're going to see supplements, is supplements yeah. everywhere. Already are. You yeah, already are. With They're already doing it with CBD. I'm trying, I'm trying CBD, to remember everything. if I know a lot of fat stoners. Do you know a lot of fat stoners? I know a few. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Just curious. But they're like very, you know, like Cheeto-y, like on the couch playing video games. Like that. they were already doing that. Well, I think that's the risk. <laughs> so I, think, I, mean? I think that's the risk you, you take. You can't blame, you can't blame the, the cannabis. Ri- I think really. that's the risk. I had this conversation with my younger brother when he first experimented with cannabis. I remember I was like uh, 30 years old or so, and he's like at 20, and he's like, we're talking about this stuff, or he was 18 around that time. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember telling him like, listen, you know, I know your brother did this whole you know, medical marijuana thing. And I did all this stuff, but I just want you to know that real easy, this could turn into like something that completely distracts you. I know you, you enjoy the benefits of you, of it. And, and you're, he's expressing all that to me. Like, well, you know, brother, I feel like it, it set, settles my anxiety down and this thing's like uh, closing me uh-huh. on why it's so great. Right. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, I get it, bro. Yeah. I get all that, but it gets, it gets so nice that you end up doing it all the time. And then you don't do fucking shit all day long. Yeah. So pay attention to that and stop caring as much. Like you get your, things, yeah, yeah. Get your priorities, right? Don't look for an excuse to do that just because you like it so much. Appreciate it, but also respect it. Yeah, you right? know what I call somebody who smokes pot and becomes a loser? What's that? A loser. Uh, already a loser. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're just a loser. That's, it. That's all. <laughs> Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next up is TDC Fitness Eddie. What is your opinion on SARMs? I have been getting more questions about SARMs. It's, recent, it's been recently. a long time. Do you know why? Since Ben, since ben Greenfield. So I did a quick Google search of okay. SARMs. And you know why we're getting so many questions on this? First of all, SARMs are selective androgen receptor modulators. So that's a uh, if you don't know what that means, if that's a, that sounds very complicated. 
these are chemicals that are designed to modulate the androgen receptor in the body or to attach to the androgen receptor to get it to express what it does. The androgen receptors are the ones that testosterone uh, uh, activates or atta attaches to. Now, the reason why I think we're getting a lot of questions on this is I Googled SARMs and the first 10 uh, searches that come up are these fucking websites that are pretending to write scientific articles on SARMs. Ooh, and at the end, they're basically no sales way. funnels. Wow. Oh, and at the end of them- Brilliant, man. You make me want to Google it now. At the end of them, they're links to how you can buy SARMs online. Mm. And these articles are so inaccurate and so terrible. Like I'm reading them and all they talk about is how safe they are, how awesome they are, how great they are for your yeah. health. How these are like if you like, oh, hey, look, you want to take. I have been hearing a lot of that lately about how safe they're. I'm like, wait a minute, this bullshit. Is just, yeah, bullshit. It's like this how can't be the same. Take substance. you know, hey, do you want to take steroids without the side effects? You know, SARMs are what we're looking for. So, SARMs are these chemicals that are being developed and researched. Got to be clear here. They're being developed and researched. None of them have been approved by anybody. They have not. They're not even in phase three trials is it in, in the, the FDA gray market, or is it in like the black market? Well, so it's the reason why it's a gray market is because they're black market in the sense that I can't buy a SARM for human consumption. But there's this weird uh, loophole in the law where like animals I can, or something I can buy SARMs for research purposes. Hmm. So there's no regulations or very little regulations to buy certain chemicals for research purposes. Hmm. For example, I could buy Viagra, the chemical Viagra that makes Viagra for research you know, purposes, and you'll find places like that online. And they won't sell them in tablet form. They'll sell them in liquid form as uh, if you're buying, and then they'll give you dosing instructions on how to take it. So I see. SARMs are this, and you see all these articles and blogs written on SARMs about how safe they are. They're like steroids without the side effects, and studies show they build muscle and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Um, SARMs, first and foremost, uh, they're being researched, so they're totally, totally new, so we don't know what they do long-term. So if anybody says they're safe, uh, is a fucking liar. Number two, the doses used in the research are not the doses that people are taking to try and build muscle. If you took the dose of SARMs, for example, Osterin is one of them, if you took the dose of Osterin, that the, they're using in research, you'd be using one milligram a day. The doses that people are using to try and build muscle is like 50, oh, 50. 50 to shit. 150 wow. milligrams a day. In the studies, they're showing that super low doses have uh, uh, less negative effects on the hormone systems of people or animals than taking testosterone. What I mean by that is if you take testosterone injections or steroids, one of the side effects of them is your body stops producing its own testosterone, which is a bad side effect, right? You go off and hopefully it comes back. Well, in these studies, giving these people or animals these super low doses of SARMs, they're noticing an effect, but it's much smaller. So now people are like, oh shit, you can take these and not shut down your testosterone. <clears throat> Wrong. If you take 50 to 100 milligrams of, of SARMs every day, you're going to shut down your testosterone like you're taking steroids. These things attach to the androgen receptors, and what they're attempting to do is they're attempting to ex uh, exert anabolic muscle building effects without androgenic, you know, male uh, masculinizing effects. So they're trying to give you the muscle building effects without the masculinizing effects, and that's supposed to be this panacea. First off, uh, the androgenic effects of testosterone and steroids are part of the reason why they build muscle so well. People don't realize this, but if you go pure anabolic, you won't build nearly as much strength and muscle as if you go androgenic. This is why the some of the most popular steroids are the ones that are the most androgenic, uh, like uh, Trembolone or Masteron or Anadrol. Like those are anabolic, but they're also very androgenic. And and you know this; those people who take steroids know the ones that build the most muscle also give you the most side effects. That's part of the reason why. So they're not going to build muscle like testosterone or like steroids at all. You're going to get very little muscle building effect. And you're going to get... You're going to be risking almost the same that you would be taking testosterone. Uh, we, don't, <laughs> we don't know. Well, yeah. We don't know what you're right, risking. Yeah. Yeah. At least testosterone, if you take a testosterone, which I'm not advocating for, but at least when you take testosterone, you know exactly There's what it's going to do. There's research there. Yeah. Not only research, but you know what it's going to do. It's yeah. in your body already. Yeah. With a SARM, you're taking a chemical that we don't know everything that it does. In fact, I've, I did a lot of research on SARMs a couple of years ago. 
because someone brought them to my attention and back then it wasn't that well known so i was like really into like what is this new you know drug that they're that they're developing or they're working on and you read the forums and people will talk about these side effects that you should expect but it's not a big deal one of the side effects is uh, a yellow tint to your vision <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! So and, you see like a bat now, and a, and and a loss, it's and like it, blue blockers constantly, and, it, and yeah, a dramatic funny. decrease or loss of night vision. So guys will go outside at night and be like, "Oh, it takes me 15 oh, minutes shit, to I adjust to the night," <laughs> yeah. or "I can't drive at night right now on it, so I, I have, have to, to stop blink taking 50, it." Fifty thousand times, and then it finally yeah. opens. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? What if you go blind? <laughs> is it worth it for like three pounds of muscle? And yeah, that's how much you gain, by the way, is like three pounds of muscle. Are you went blind lose. from masturbating? Yeah. So this is fine. Which you yeah. lose when you go off of them anyway. So my my strong opinion on SARMs is don't take SARMs. It's stupid. It's totally dumb. If you're going to go the route of taking some illegal shit, go take steroids. At least you know you know what they're doing. Um, but it's it's like the biggest. Uh, it's like this this you're getting a lot of people talking about because I'm I'm going. If you like you said, if you Google. Mm. You see all these bullshit articles trying to sell you their Good research marketing, chemicals. man. Yeah, yeah they that's, ninja no, it's it's a it's a scary thing, and I just if you're if you're willing to try that, right? Then to me, I feel like I would I would personally much rather go somewhere where I feel like something has been studied for a lot longer. We know. Uh, we understand the dosage longer. We know what it looks like. So we we see humans that are walking around right now that have taken steroids for thirty years of their There's life. Hormone somewhere. replacement therapists, yeah, are it, like revolving it, around it. Exactly, exactly. It's become. Uh, I I don't know. I'm just. I'm not comfortable with doing something that affects me hormonally like that, that I, there's not enough research around it to to make me feel comfortable. You know, and who's to say maybe. We are wrong. Maybe that in five years they they nail it down and it's. I still wouldn't. I'll tell you why. Even <laughs> let's say it gets approved by the FDA, passes phase three trials. Here you go. It's a a, a new drug we're going to use for men with low testosterone or for women with osteoporosis or whatever they're or for people with muscle wasting disease because those are the those are the reasons why they're studying them. Let's say it's passed and it's an FDA uh, F, and now it's passed by the FDA. It still has compared to testosterone. Very little research behind it. Uh, how many? Think about all the drugs that have get re, got recalled last year alone by the FDA that got approved by the FDA. That all of a sudden we're like, oops, we just discovered this causes you know yeah, we cancer. Didn't re- or this we didn't realize it takes ten years for it to develop the cancer, yeah. right? Yeah, no, so. no, 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 no. I w- I'm I'm sorry. I I stay away from SARM. And like again, if you're trying to build muscle with SARM, they don't even build muscle that well. Go ahead and read on the forums how much people are gaining five pounds of muscle to take a hundred times what the studies or the early studies are doing on animals to risk what? Totally not worth it. You know You know what it reminds me of? So last year, if I'm not mistaken, about six people died from synthetic marijuana. These are the, the, fake, uh, oh, the fake marijuana uh, that you can buy like at the gas station, like it's called Spice or whatever, mm-hmm. where scientists, these, these, these garage scientists are taking chemicals and making them uh, so that they can uh, act on the cannabinoid recept- receptors and get you high, but they're technically legal through this loophole, the same loophole that SARMs are, are legal through, right? So they're inventing these chemicals that'll do this. And plus, if you if you get drug tested for marijuana, you'll show up negative, even though you're taking these synthetic cannabinoids. But there's been six deaths attributed to these last year alone. And every year, people will go through like, you know, uh, will die from the use of synthetic marijuana. And last year, how many dead people have died from marijuana? Zero. Actually, the last 10,000 years, how many people died of marijuana? Right. Zero. This is a, a, it's a, it's a great example of you've got the natural thing. We're trying to figure out a chemical version of it, and we end up not, you know, doing some crazy shit. That's exactly what SARMs are. Mark my words. Stay away. This next question is from Isa Mazin. When I bench press, I don't really feel it in my chesticles. <laughs> chesticles. How do I get my pecs to fire instead of my shoulders or triceps? I've tried close grip and wide grip bench. Nothing is really working. This uh, this reminds me of when uh, we've done episodes on I like love ha- how to build. Female your- asks this question too. Uh, it's she, awesome. She's right. on her forum. Yeah, she's, love her. She's a badass. Um, this reminds me of when people ask me like why they can't build their glutes even when they squat and deadlift. Mm-hmm. Um, right, right. Uh, it's you you have a poor connection to your chest. So even though your form looks good and you're moving the weight, your chest is working. By the way, it's just not working uh, to its fullest capacity. And what you need to do is learn how to connect to your pecs so that when you do 
an exercise like bench press, you end up feeling it more. Mm. One of the things you can do in the bench press, because then there's going to be a lot of, I, I guarantee we're going to end up talking about like techniques you can do outside the bench yeah. press. But Priming while nice. you're doing the bench press uh, is to remember the function of the pecs, which is to bring the humerus, that's the top part of your arm, in towards the center line of your body. So while you're pressing the barbell off your chest, pull your don't slide your hands on the bar, keep your hands tight on the bar, but imagine you're driving your hands in and bring your elbows in as you come up. So you want to create this inward tension mm-hmm. as you press up, as you press the bar up, but you're going to have to go lighter with your right weight and slower to really focus on this and then you should start to feel your chest uh, a little bit more. I don't know if you guys want to talk about yeah or- well a couple things um one i find this really common when i used to get clients that had got breast implants and they weren't really like fitness people before like say i get this girl who's 30 years old or so she got breast implants at like 25 or so never really trained or lifted weights finally at a point in her life where she feels it's necessary for her to come in and really get serious about her health and fitness And she's, one, never really trained the chest, which is already a challenge, right? So mechanically, when everybody, uh, not every, majority of all humans suffer from some sort of upper cross syndrome where our shoulders are rounded forward and our head is forward, when we're already in that position, the bench press becomes one of the hardest exercises to teach somebody mechanically because Mm -hmm. of the dysfunction, right? Because we are so rolled forward and used to using our shoulders and our everyday motions because of our posture. So already it's challenging. Then you get somebody who maybe has breast implants where they've gone in there and, you know, shoved uh, fake boobs and busted up their chest and they stayed away from exercising it for a long period of time and moving it. And then the body has to overcompensate with other muscles. And now they've trained to use these other muscles to do these pushing movements. So super common with that. A hundred percent. This is like why prime and prime pro was created. I mean, we Mm -hmm. uh, created this program because we knew that this is a, a, there's a lot of people that can relate to not being able to fill this. I can count uh, many, many clients uh, that I spent months actually getting them just to feel an exercise like a, a bench press because of their posture was so bad. Mm-hmm. So addressing uh, your posture. Now, some basic moves uh, for takeaways for those that don't own Prime or Prime Pro already. Uh, I, I love to take someone like this and lay them on a foam roll. So I run the foam roller down their spine and I do some like dumbbell chest flies mm-hmm. with 15, 20 pounds and I actually want you to, and what I'm doing is I'm allowing the the foam roll to open up your chest and scapula and it'll, and the gravity will naturally dr- drop your shoulder blades because the, there's no support for the shoulder blades. So it helps. Increases range of motion a bit yep. and the capacity there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's That's a great, a great one. I, I <clears throat> honestly, I feel the same way with just getting into the posture of it, it first and, and really you know, working on connecting to that process, you know, through mobility and being able to properly retract to, um, to the range that like you're capable of, of getting to. And maybe that's something that you might want to consider working on for a while in order to then, um, you know, retract properly and depress properly and be able to sustain and hold that in an isometric position. So if I take that as a focal point, And then I apply it to the position where I'm laying down. So this is where, like, I guess there might be some controversy with the way that you, uh, you know, power lifters do it versus like bodybuilders, right? And connecting to the chest. But for me, uh, I always tend to lean more towards, you know, a nice open chest. So I'm going for full range of motion and I'm really relying on the stability there with my shoulder blades to keep me nice and tight in that full retracted position. And then that open position is really going to allow me to now I'm going to squeeze and work on all these other techniques where like say I'm at the bottom of of the rep and I want to squeeze and connect to that uh, uh, piece like like Sal's talking about squeezing and and bringing it in inward you know as I'm pressing up um, you know techniques like that to help to connect to the process more but yeah. To, to piggyback off your isometric thing, that I this is something that I used to love to do. If someone, I mean, because sometimes you'll get clients that are just no, you do all these things and like I can't feel it. I still yeah. can't. Stubborn, still, yeah. Right, it's really it. stubborn. So the next uh, progression for me, helping someone feel it in their pecs, is lying on that foam roll. I'll have them grab like real light five ten pound dumbbells, 
open them all the way up in the fly position, and then I will resist them trying to close until I can get them to feel it where I want. So they're in the fly position. I'm holding the dumbbells down, not allowing them to close it together and getting in an isometric hold mm. and getting them to focus on their chest in that isometric hold until they can figure that and not stress it with the arms, not stress it with the shoulders. Then once they can connect it to the chest in that position, then I can release with and my hands. Incrementally making yep. your way up those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you squeeze like five, 10 seconds uh, in the yes. end range and then slowly make your way up inch by inch. And here's something easy too that you can do. This is really easy. I, this is what I did early in my career before I really understood uh, priming is if I had somebody who didn't feel their glutes or their hamstrings or their quads or their chest or you know another prime mover of, of usually compound movements is I would have them do two like one or two isolation exercises for that muscle and then I'd move them to the compound so like if you don't feel your chest when you're bent this is easy by the way mm-hmm. you don't feel like you don't, you're not feeling your, your pecs with a bench press go do uh, three sets of cable crossovers and really squeeze the hell out of your chest and really feel the burn and the pump in your pecs. Yeah. Then go bench press and boom, before you, you'll feel those pecs start yeah, to work because it's already, oh, that's, it's and already that, pumped. And that's it's what already, I meant by getting on that foam mm-hmm. is you do that first mm-hmm. and then you yeah. go over to the bench press. I know this is a bench press question. Like yeah. If you do that first, you'll feel it in your chest and then you go to the bench press and it's a lot I easier. I had trouble feeling my chest with bench press for so, years. So did I. So that, I, I can I, definitely relate to this. Did, yeah, and I did uh, what I ended up doing, and this again, before I understood priming, I was a kid, is I did uh, flies. I would do flies before I pressed and yeah. I just did that for a year. You I know would, what's really funny? Like, they come to think of it, a long time ago, I used to get made fun of a lot when before I would go to bench because of my ritual. And uh, my ritual, I would... I would get to the bench and I would kind of open up and like get in this like dynamic stretch like really quickly. So I would do like, like I'm almost like throwing my arms back and opening my chest. And then I would lay on the bench and I would go through this like pump kind of simulating like plyometric type oh, wow. movement. And I would just do that like totally like uh, intuitively, like not even realizing it was a thing or anything, but everybody used to make fun of me for that. But I would get like way better connection. You were way. brilliant without even knowing it. <laughs> Every time. Or as Adam would say, or as Adam would say idiot, idiot servants. servants. <laughs> it's, it's servants to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com, put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com, put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash nature bite, put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Next up is Dave230686. <laughs> okay. Beep, beep, boop, beep. It's a lie. <laughs> yeah, binary. My name binary. is Dave, 2308. Two, er Kettlebell swings or hill sprints for burning fat. Which is most effective and why? So this reminds me of a question I got on Instagram. I was going to tell you guys earlier and then you cut me off. Wait. <laughs> someone, someone asked me a question on Instagram. Uh, it was real simple. Uh, what's the best way to burn bo- uh, belly fat? You know, when you get a question like that, and you're like, oh, God. Those are dude, awesome. Where like, what am I? Like, this? there's a fucking million. So, you know what I know what I started doing from now on? Mm. When someone asked me that, I just give them a straight, like a flat. So, it's like, what should I, what, what's the best way to burn belly fat? I'm like, MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Prime. <laughs> <laughs> and they got it. <laughs> and they ended up buying the program. They're like, cool. They're like, all right, well, there you go. I guess that's a good start. Uh. Um, the the Which one's better for burning body fat? Okay. So well, there's. This these, is going to be tough. Cause it's not of- that tough. And I'll tell you why it's not that tough because. They're so different, right? It's if you were to ask something like hill sprints versus running on the ground flat versus uh, ropes versus jump rope, or those are all kind of similar. The kettlebell swings uh, are definitely way more taxing on the body and can definitely end up hindering what you do the the next day. So I feel like, especially if you're doing kettlebell swings with some decent weight, I mean, I, I guess if you're doing- It depends some, how far the sprint, I, I mean, how hard the yeah, sprint man, is, I've dude. been pretty fried after doing hill sprints. 
They're both yeah, animals. Yeah, but they're, one, okay. one of them is going to fry you more CNS. One's going to fry you more uh, like uh, physically because mm, of uh, muscular the, endurance wise. Yeah, exactly. So you're swinging a kettlebell. It depends how it's done. Mm. Like, okay, yeah, exactly. So a hill sprint is anaerobic, right? Because he's already wrote the. You know, that wasn't the question. We're going to go sprint. down this rabbit hole right here. Yeah, right? sprint oh, is anaerobic. <laughs> here we go. Uh, kettlebell swings can be anaerobic or it can be endurance. Like if you're doing kettlebell swings, exactly. For, if you're doing hard style, we just went over this in the YouTube series with Mike. Actually, it's kind of good to bring that up we uh we evaluated um this hard style which is like the way that russians uh, are typically known for versus like the kettlebell sport which is all the technique is based off of energy management and how much uh they could uh, endure conserve. like long periods yeah, of time of swing, yeah. swinging so yeah there's a different way to um to do it and so i guess yeah again it, this will all uh, involve like how much like fast twitch response are you trying to recruit versus like you know more of an endurance like well I'll, I'll tell you like how I would like prescribe it to a client like I, or how I would decide how, how I would do it is which one which one has more carryovers into something else that is a priority to me so let's say um, like I was playing in a men's basketball league not that many years ago so having some sort of like ability to sprint like uh, up a hill or period sprinting outside on the ground like the, I would like that that would carry over in my journey to lean out and burn fat in addition to give me some uh, benefits to the sport that I was playing where a kettlebell swing sure it has some carryover but not as much carryover as the hill sprints would be for that sport now maybe I have a poor connection to my glutes or my hip hinge is not that great and I'm working on my deadlift and my squat a lot and there's a lot of great carryover from the kettlebell swing over into movements like that or maybe just I want a better butt uh, I would probably do some kettlebell swings, but from a fat burning, uh, I guess it would really depend on, uh, which one you were doing last, right? Like if you were using kettlebell swings for the last couple weeks for your, uh, burning fat and then actually going to do hill sprints would be awesome to continue on that progress of burning fat Here, and then vice versa. Here's why I like hills. If I, if we're, okay. Uh, all things being considered, of course, uh, all things being equal, I should say. If we have to pick on a head-to-head -head, uh, comparison, sprints versus swings, specifically for fat loss, first off, I prefer anaerobic activity for fat loss than I, than I do to uh, endurance uh, you know, uh, type activity or aerobic activity because anaerobic activity promotes or at least maintains muscle and metabolism versus aerobic activity tends to promote the adaptation that makes you more efficient, therefore slowing your metabolism down. So if we're, if we're comparing them head-to-head -head and everything else is equal, here's why I like sprints better. I like sprints better because I can go max out intensity, short distance, and make it really anaerobic. With kettlebell swings, it's much more technical, and I can't go all out with kettlebell swings for 30 seconds yeah. like I did with sprints because my form's going to fuck up and it's going to be... Well, and there's a lot of momentum in, you know, uh, this this whole pendulum process. Like it's like you said, it's very skillful uh, movement, but it's also like um, you, you have to get into a, a zone in a rhythm with it. Yeah. That uh, is consistent. With and sprints, you could just sprints, drive. You just go balls to the wall. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So if I, 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 I would tend to lean in that direction. There's well. there's no doubt, though, the the uh, the best if you enjoy both is to do both and to whichever one you're not doing, which is what we tend to. Here's yeah. the thing: right, don't right. talk like, about. I I don't think you should do either one to burn fat. Don't look at them that way. I'd say, yeah. uh, do sprints to improve your in your 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 power, uh, or your VO2 max or athletic performance. Do kettlebell swings because it's part of your exercise program. And it's more technical. And it's yeah. more technical. That's and what I meant by that. Yeah. Whichever one has well, more sprints are harder in your body. Whichever Let's one of them agree. to me has more carry over into your personal goals. I tried to draw the analogy there with my basketball. I probably didn't hit very well, and I know I lost Sal. Well, but that was the point of what's me. basketball? Yeah, that was the yes. point of me saying that was that's how I would really decide that because really I'm not a fan of using cardio as the main way of burning fat in the first place. Well, not even I, You mention, don't need cardio to burn fat. Yeah, it's like sprints if you're going to talk about injuries like the like one of the single most like exposing exercises you could do uh to show you where your imbalances lie and it, your body will talk to you almost immediately is to do a sprint yeah. <laughs> so True. like 
honestly, like, and I, I love keep maintaining like athleticism and trying to incorporate fast twitch movement. And I'm more inclined to do jump rope versus sprinting because of that simple fact alone. I don't do it enough. And it's such a, it's, it's a thing that your body has to be very well versed in and respond properly to and fire on all cylinders at, you know, max effort. Uh, you know, so like it, true. it's like, dude, your, your, your joints are going to explode you well, know, you, if you haven't done it or forever. you'll, ta- or you'll, you'll pull something. You're going to pull something. Yeah. You're, dude, if oh, I, if 100%. we, if we took, you know, uh, 20 random people off the street and had them sprint at their max <laughs> out pulling a hammy, dude. and had them sprint at their max yeah. full intensity for just 15, 20 seconds, like yeah. the av- 20 average people. I bet you the vast majority of them hurt themselves. Oh, especially with no warm. Totally, of course. Just, that's what I mean. Like, just, of most people don't even know how to warm. Even warming up to that, it's like you haven't. Your body hasn't even moved like that. God. Yeah, yeah, it's. it's I remember. So for, for I, our so demanding for, for our age and older. But I mean, I guess if you're 15, you still have. You're, yeah, you're still you're 15, spry, so you, you can, can get do up whatever. and do whatever you want. Uh, but I, I see, keep this in mind, and I know we haven't. We actually haven't talked about cardio. It's been a while since we did a whole thing on cardio. Um, you know, it only, it only takes your body about two weeks to really start to become pretty efficient at whatever it is you're doing. So let's say you take off and every day you decide to do these kettlebell swings and your 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 goal is fat loss, right? Since that's what you're saying right now is, you know, which one is more effective for fat loss. And you've got the 14 days you do kettlebell swings every single day to, to towards this fat loss journey. Well, by, by days 14, you're the, the returns are, are starting to decline like as far as... And I used to give these hypothetical numbers to, to draw this uh, analogy for clients is imagine that the first time that you did that, that session of kettlebell swings, your body burned, you know, 10 units of fat, let's just say. Well, the next time you do it, it does nine and a half. And the next time you do it, it does nine. The next time it does eight, then it does seven, six, five, four, and it keeps going down. And so maybe for 14 days of you doing this consistently, you're still burning some fat, but now the body has become very efficient at what you're what you're teaching it, and it does that quicker with with things that are aerobic. So you want to make sure that you're staying ahead of that curve. So I'm looking at it like, okay, well, if this if kettlebell swings is is mirrors something that I do more, like I do a lot of other kettlebell exercises all the time, so my body is very adapted, efficient to that. Going out and doing hill sprints, and I want the maximum fat from fat burn from it. I'm going to get the most benefit from what's the least least uh, uh, similar to what I currently do or have been doing. Does that make sense? Uh, it makes it makes total sense. They've actually done studies on this where they'll show uh, like a high level, way, very well trained you know athlete like a swimmer, and they'll have them swim in a pool for you know a few laps or whatever, and measure their calorie burn, and it's like way lower than you would ever imagine. Oh yeah, because they're they're so bo- efficient at it. Yeah, you know, their bodies have become yeah. so efficient at what they're doing that they're just burning less calories on all levels, right? It becomes mechanically better. It conserves your technique, it con- everything. It conserves energy better. Your technique, everything gets better. I mean, that's we're adaptation machines. It's yeah. we're so amazing. It's so cool. And when you start to look at it like that, like you want your body to start to adapt to a point, but then you don't want it to be when you're using. How do you it, make change? Change. Yeah, right. And yeah. and when you Dang. when you're trying to burn fat and Mr. you're Damos. And this is also why I don't why you know I all the time I talk about cardio. Oh, I'm so anti cardio. Well, everyone thinks I'm anti cardio. Like, no, I'm just I'm not about getting on and hammering myself on on a machine or swinging away a kettlebell or sprinting up a hill hoping that I'm going to shred all these all these ounces of body fat off of me when I know that my body is going to figure this shit out real quick. Real quick, it's going to see great results from it. And then after that, I'm going to become very efficient. And guess what? If running up a hill hella fast is my main goal, I'm going to accomplish that pretty quick. But if my main goal is to burn fat, I'm better looking more deeper into my programming and my diet than I ever am on what's better for me to be doing as far as what exercise I should be doing to be burning this fat. Great point, Adam. Check this out. Go to YouTube and subscribe to Mind Pump TV. We post a new video every awesome video single day also hype it up a little more if you want to ask us a question that we can answer on an episode like this one the place to do it is on instagram the page to do it on is mind pump media we also have personal pages on instagram mine is mind pump sal adam a mind pump adam justin is mind pump justin and doug is mind pump dog thank you for listening to mind pump if your goal is to build and shape your body dramatically improve your health and energy and maximize your overall performance check out our discounted rgb super bundle at mindpumpmedia.com the rgb super bundle includes maps anabolic 
MAPS performance, and MAPS aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.